He didn't look like a fighter, more like a boy scout in a Norman Rockwell painting. But Sean O'Grady was born into a boxing family, led by a patriarch who single-handedly brought the sport of boxing to Oklahoma in the 1970s and 80s. Pat O'Grady was born on October 12, 1927 in Lincoln, Nebraska. He would lie about his age and enlist in the Marines at age 14. He would be wounded twice in the battles of Guadalcanal and Peleliu while fighting with the 1st Marine Division. Returning home after World War II, O'Grady would try professional boxing, competing in the lightweight division all the way up to light heavyweight. The higher in weight he competed, the less successful he was, although at one point he was a sparring partner for middleweight champion Rocky Graziano. In 1955, Jeannie Templeton would enter a television repair shop in Austin, Texas to buy a tube for her broken car radio. Pat O'Grady owned the shop, and two months later, he not only repaired her car radio, he married her. The couple would eventually move to Oklahoma, where they would raise three children, Colleen, Sean, and Rosie. Leaving boxing as a competitor, Pat would turn to promoting. He started promoting bouts held at a Catholic church in Austin, Texas, before setting roots in Oklahoma. O'Grady would promote the biggest fight for a total tonnage in the ring, as he would have the 340-pound Claude Humphrey McBride take on the 360-pound Jimmy Black. O'Grady would also promote what was then the only world title fight to be held in Oklahoma state history as Bob Foster would defend his light heavyweight crown against Brian Kelly. Wife Jeannie would join Pat in the boxing business. They couldn't get any publicity, so they started their own newspaper, calling it the Texas Boxing Monthly. Jeannie would get fight results from all over the world and print them in the newsletter. But when the cost of printing the paper became too much, the O'Grady's purchased their own printing press and published the newspaper from home. Pat would continue to promote his own bouts while also working as a cut man for heavyweight contender Ken Norton. Meanwhile, the young Sean O'Grady wanted to get into boxing. His father Pat was managing a boxer named Tony Longoria who moved in with the family. Sean wanted to be like Longoria, a rough and ready fighter. Pat then allowed Sean to begin boxing at the age of nine. In the fifth grade, Sean was hanging from the monkey bars when he told his young friends that one day he would become a world boxing champion. They all laughed. Seventeen amateur fights and six years later, Pat would take Sean to be assessed by Sugar Ray Robinson. The legend said Sean would be a good one and all systems were go. The family had a conference and Sean would turn professional. He would join his father's boxing roadshow, helping set up the ring and arenas he would fight in before making it home in time for school the next morning. I know Pat wouldn't let him get hurt, Sean's mother Jeannie said. I know it's taking a chance, but you can't go tippy-toeing through life. I know Sean is good and he can take care of himself, and Pat's always there. His father would be the manager Mother Jeannie would do the ticket sales, press releases, and poster distribution. She would also film all of Sean's fights. With his sisters Colleen and Rosie helping out, a family business was formed, Star Maker Incorporated. O'Grady would win his first 29 fights in a row against journeyman opposition. Still, he was a teenager knocking out grown men. It became customary for O'Grady to chew gum and blow bubbles upon entering the ring but he insisted it wasn't shtick. I like bubblegum, O'Grady said. Lollipops, too. But on February 25th, 1976, the bubble would burst as O'Grady would take a huge step up in class to take on top featherweight contender Danny Little Red Lopez. The 17-year-old O'Grady would not be able to answer the bell for the fifth round. O'Grady didn't make any excuses after the loss, stating that he just flat out got beat. When I got beat, O'Grady said, a lot of people laughed and said they knew I would. They said things like, no fighters ever came out of Oklahoma and whoever came out of the state that was any good. Well, what about Mickey Mantle and Johnny Bench? Anyway, I made up my mind that I was going to show them they were wrong. The plan was for O'Grady to keep boxing so he could pay his way through medical school. 
he wanted to retire from boxing at age 22 and become a surgeon. In the interim, he would work as a scrub technician in an Oklahoma City hospital. Sean's a boy in a man's world, Pettigrady said. The sooner he gets out of boxing, the better. In June of 1978, O'Grady would take on featherweight contender Sheik Fukuyama in one of the bloodiest battles in boxing history. Returning home, O'Grady would once again feast on Midwest journeymen and rise in weight before facing undefeated prospect Gonzalo Montalano. He would decision Montalano, and the victory would place O'Grady in title contention. On November 1, 1980, O'Grady would get his shot against Jim Watt for the WBC lightweight title. British promoter Mickey Duff had come to the house and asked him to take the fight against Watt on 24 days' notice. The message was clear, take the bout now or never fight for the title. O'Grady would have to travel to Watts' native Scotland. Upon arrival, he found out that the fight would take place at 2 o'clock in the morning. He was promised a five-star hotel in the city, but instead received a three-star hotel in the middle of nowhere. He had played along with the role of being an Irish Catholic even though he was an Oklahoma Baptist. Then on the morning of the bout, a death threat came. A letter with a type threat to everyone in his party and signed by a group calling itself the Protestant Army. The O'Grady's thought about pulling out, but Mickey Duff threatened them with all the legal moves his lawyer would make if they did. Now under duress, the O'Grady's went through with the fight. Very, I'm very frightened for my family, not so much for myself, but uh, for my family and even uh, getting out of town after the fight. 
I've been very happy here in, in Glasgow, and uh, I would like, if I win, I would like to make some defenses here in Glasgow. But uh, I don't know, I, I was really scared today, and I'm sure that it's going to uh, hamper my fighting just a little bit. I, uh, I'm very sure that I'll be worried about uh, my, my mother and my two sisters and my grandmother. It's a... And O'Grady was stunned. O'Grady was, had his head snapped back, his knees buckled. This is the second round. We have 35 seconds left in it. Jim Watt, the champion, buckled the knees of the challenger. Got an idea of Watt's quick reflexes coming off that rope and back within range. The heavier punch was on the forehead. Oh, what a careful champion he is on his diet. He has to be careful of that right hand thrown by the challenger. In fact, the uh, entire upper portion of Watt's face becoming very, very puffy from the punches. He thought the blood would most likely be flowing from the face of the challenger. But now it is really coming out of the nose of the champion in the blue trunks, Jim Watt. Got a repair job in 35 seconds here in Glasgow, Scotland. City of a million people. And you can see Watt having trouble breathing now because of the nosebleed, opening his mouth, trying to breathe through it. And that is difficult with a mouthpiece in there. I recall one clinch thus far. A minute to go. Brady keeps coming in and out. And a right-hand lead found its mark. And now there is a big split. A cut on the right side of the champion, Jim Watt. His fourth title defense. The Scottish hero in trouble. Damage from the fists of the challenger, Angular. Sean O'Grady, 30 seconds. Round nine. And now, Renault Valderu takes a look. We'll probably call in the doctor. The doctors can only recommend Dr. Barclay and Dr. Shea. I'm surprised that they allowed Terry Wallace to put pressure on the cut at the stopping of this round. But only momentarily thought it better to go back to the right side. The crowd thought that was a heavy punch by the champion. It was a glancing blow. With an offense and still trying to protect the cut on the right side. Throwing that jab. There was a short hook. And now a butt has caused a split on the forehead of Sean O'Grady. An accidental meeting of the heads. Holy mackerel. In case of a cut caused by an unintentional butt. Now we're in the final 25 seconds. And what's this? Calling for the doctor. Raymond Balderou. Stopping the clock here in the 11th round with about 25 seconds to go. Rodney Gibson coming up to sponge away the blood. Pat O'Grady, the dad, looking on. And the doctor, the doctor says, okay to continue, so. Nosebleed. Again, Jim Watt in blue, the south ball. An awful looking cut, and that's it. The doctor comes in. The fight has not been called, signaling for consultation from the physician who needs a little better physical conditioning. A little, little bit of weight. He had trouble getting up those steps. Now, looking at that deep cut above the bridge of the nose. About 35 seconds left. 135, excuse me, left in the 12th round. Doctor says, continue. It's just difficult on vision 
and the blood flows from a forehead cut. And some of the Scottish fans now are almost booing their champion that he'd be going for the cut. And again, they're getting their heads awfully close once more with less than a minute. In comes a program. The programs are coming in. What they want the referee to do is stop the fight so Jim Watt will keep his title. And Sean O'Grady's mom cheering along with the two sisters in the far corner. There you see them. Just beneath and there. That's it. That is it. O'Grady thought he had the fight won in the ninth round. I had the greatest feeling in my life, O'Grady said. I thought, this is it. I'm the WBC lightweight champion of the world. Then the whole crowd started booing and I'm thinking, there's no way the referee is going to stop this fight. I was going to stop it, Watts trainer Terry Lawless said. 30 seconds more and I was going to throw in the towel. I would have had to stop it. Jim was just swallowing so much blood he couldn't breathe the blood was just streaming down from his nose and into his mouth. Jeannie O'Grady would lobby for a rematch for Sean. The WBC agreed, but Watt said he needed more time because of plastic surgery. Jeannie called him out on the lie, but then Watt claimed appendicitis. Then, six months later, Watt would instead defend his title against Alexis Arguello. But O'Grady would get another shot, only this time against WBA champion Hilmer Kenty, and about to be broadcast by ABC. The high-profile bout made O'Grady's record come under scrutiny, as the majority of his fights took place in his native Oklahoma against fighters with spotty records. Later, there were allegations of a multi-named scheme Pat used to recycle the same fighters in order to pad Sean's record. Pat would respond to these rumors with humor. Listen, Pat said, I gave Sean 76 fixed fights and he still lost two of them. But in April of 1981, O'Grady would finally answer all of his critics. Coming in as the underdog against Kenty, the hard-hitting champion of the now-famed Kronk Gym in Detroit. Quickly, too, I must tell you that Hill McKenzie has been suffering from a heavy cold, a heavy chest and nose congestion. How much it'll affect his fight remains to be seen. A minute left in the first round. Leader, his father, Pat O'Grady, in his corner says he has bled in three fights. Does that make him a bleeder? Kenny scoring quick hands in combination. to be a legend at 22, but in the writer's mind, he is. Out comes the mouthpiece. Canty's mouthpiece. The end of the round. Oh! No commercial! Suddenly, as the round was about to end, and of course, there's no saving by the bell except after the final round. The blow by Kenny, an apparent right sent by... Uh, oh. O'Grady sent Kenty down. Tough kid, O'Grady. Changed the nature of the round, perhaps. Suffered the cramps, especially against Villamar Fernandez in the 13th round of his last fight. Decision, Kenty won, 15 rounds. O'Grady scoring with the left. O'Grady now coming the aggressor. This is a fearless kid, Sean O'Grady. Penty scoring better. 
Good blow by Kenny. Now Kenny's working it the way he has to work it to win this fight. Kenny returned to boxing in the fourth round. Look at O'Grady. He squad with a good chopping right. And Kenny was hurt. And Kenny can't get off the ropes, or at least he hasn't thus far. And that's no place to be. Kenny's all right when he boxes. When he trades, he's in trouble. The chest and nose congestion. Right there, you saw Brady with a good right. And another. That spun the fighter. Kenty against the ropes. But look, what a cut. Another huge cut. Oh, Brady always called the cutter. Outside the corner of the left eye. And Kenty going to work on it. Oh, Brady claimed the butt. Telling O'Grady Brady that. saw Kenty staggered by that O'Grady left back against the ropes and there goes O'Grady the kid is putting on a great show he really is despite now cut over Kenty's right eye a lot of blood so the bloodletting is almost even at this point and O'Grady is chewing him up Kenty in deep trouble and O'Grady is pulverizing him O'Grady has to do is keep his composure, work the opponent, not go wild, and not fail to take the opportunity to put Kenty away. Look at O'Grady, tear him apart. Larry has it, breaking them. A minute gone in round eight. Kenny scoring well there. This fight goes the distance. There's plenty of time for either fight. And look at Kenny pouring back. Or rather, O'Grady pouring back. There it was. And it's called a knockdown by Larry Hazard. And pick up the count. As the mandatory eight count, the left did it. Again, the blood streams down the left cheek of O'Grady. The second knockdown of the fight. The left did it, and Kenny is in terrible trouble. The right sent him against the ropes. Kenny is showing real courage, but O'Grady is chewing him up. Remember, scoring 10-point bus system, referee and two judges, O'Grady effective with the combinations, driving Kenty into the corner, where he has been driven so often during the course of the afternoon. 22, a minute and a half into the round. Oh, Kenty rebounding with two blows that hurt, and O'Grady felt them. Trying to load up now, trying to measure O'Grady. was hurt now with Irish fury he fights back but O'Grady was hurt no question about it suddenly Kenty registered perhaps the strongest blows of the afternoon now O'Grady comes back and it's Kenty who's holding on what a fighter this kid is turning out to be what hard 45 seconds left it is the 11th round Montreal where from second to second the tide would turn at least in this round that's what's been happening and Kenty is hurt as O'Grady goes down below those are the blows that debilitate you that double you up the end of the round at hand and what an 11th round it has been 35 seconds left in this fight his weariness in O'Grady he has thrown a lot of punches it is understandable and there has been weariness in the legs of Hill McCanty for many rounds Sean O'Grady will be the new 
world champion will have the decision in a moment. 147, no Grady. 137, Pimpy. That does it. Referee Larry Hazard scores the fight. 146, so Grady. 139, Pimpy. Winner. Unanimous Two decision, richly Pente. deserved. Sean O'Grady is the WBA lightweight champion of the world. Sean's fifth grade prophecy had come true. The O'Grady's won as a family, and all their struggles now seemed worthwhile. Sean now had offers for commercials and movies. There was talk of a movie being made with the title of The Fighting O'Grady's, but the title reign would only last four months, as O'Grady would be stripped of his belt for not fighting Claude Noel. The O'Grady's refused to sign with promoter Bob Arum for a bout against Noel. Arum claimed to have rights on O'Grady's first two title defenses, and the courts ruled in the promoter's favor, stripping O'Grady of his WBA belt. This prompted Pat O'Grady to create his own sanctioning body, the World Athletic Association, or WAA. A fight was scheduled with fellow top contender Howard Davis and about to be contested for the WAA lightweight title. But Davis would suffer a rib injury two weeks before the bout. Hawaiian Southpaw Andy Gannigan would step in. Pat O'Grady expressed his reservations, stating how he hated Southpaws and that O'Grady had been preparing to chase Davis and might not be ready to change strategies so quickly to adopt to the likes of Gannigan. Back, which is a lion and uh, he's known in Hawaii as the lion of Hawaii. Then this fight could really become a brawl. I think Gannigan would be a deciding factor in this fight. Oh, a good ball of left hand, and we saw that O'Grady can take a punch. Well, we know that. Beautiful combination by Gannigan. Two right hooks and then a straight left. This is a small ring or fewer points to the Hoosier Baran. A good left uppercut landed from Gannigan. Yes, Back up O'Grady. That hurts you on a little bit. Yes, it did. Tim, both of these fighters have good hands. They both have thrown good Gannigan has not fought since that loss to Gonzalez in June. Now O'Grady on the attack. But he was training for a 10-round fight against Arturo. To come here replacing Howard Davis in this fight against Sean O'Grady. He has been in training. Tim like Gannigan takes chances. He wings, but he leaves himself wide open. Good counter-punching flurry there. Of course, O'Grady has had the reputation of being a bleeder. He's since had some hurt. Good face hurt. O'Grady was With two left hands, and Sean O'Grady getting slowly to his feet. He's still in trouble. We're just in the second round. O'Grady looking not real clear-eyed at this point. He was stunned, Tim, before the knockdown punch. Gannigan came out winging him and fist with the right hand, and O'Grady's in difficulty still. Looking to his corner, and his father and manager and trainer, Pat O'Grady, and Gannigan backs him up and knocks him right into the corner rope. Now, this could prove important if that's... If if that's counted as a knockdown, Tim, they have the three knockdown rule in effect. It is in effect. And indeed, it was Pat O'Grady who insisted that it remained. Yes, up. and O'Grady did not go down, Tim. He sat on the bottom rope. But they called it a knockdown. They counted it. Now O'Grady rallies. And Gannigan takes a combination from O'Grady. Tim, somebody better start thinking defense, especially Sean. He better try to get, get through this round. Gannigan trying to... Finish, O'Grady wobbled him again, and he knocks him back into the rope. He's, he's helpless, Tim. O'Grady, he's helpless. but he's staying on his feet. Get it to his oh. stamina and conditioning less than a minute to go. Down he goes, oh. left of the body. That's and it. That's the fight is over. The third knockdown in the second yes. round in Andy Gannigan. Three knockdowns. Has knocked out Sean O'Grady <laughs> for the third knockdown of the second round. And O'Grady would rise to the welterweight division after the loss, taking on perennial contender Pete Ranzani. The bout would be the promotional debut of Sylvester Stallone. Is it five, ten and a half or tall for lightweight? Countering right hand by O'Grady right on the chin. Here to hurt Ranzani, and that's the key question. Sean hurt a welterweight. He just hit him with a good right hand. He pounded Ranzani that time with the right hand. Second half of the round. A right left combination by O'Grady on the head of Ranzani. We're close and this is Pete Ranciani at his best when he's a classic stand-up fighter shooting the jab in the straight right. O'Grady 
comes back to the right hand. Another right hand by O'Grady. Get another one. O'Grady misses Ted Van Zandt. He counters with the left. It's a devastating body puncher. Right hand by O'Grady. And that stood up Pete Van Zandt. Good left hook by Ranzani. That hurt Sean. That punch hurt him. Left right combination and then a right hand all by Ranzani. And Sean, the wise boxer that he is, spun around and moved Ranzani to the ropes. Big right hand by O'Grady. And Ranzani hangs in there. That cut is not reopened, however. I'm sure he was the right opponent. Right hand by O'Grady and another one. Ranzani took two shots. Sean slipping a lot of those punches. Sean having a pretty effective round, but he takes the right hand by Ranzani. And Ranzani drives O'Grady back across the ring. O'Grady tags Ranzani with the right hand. And Ranzani was hurt by that shot. From the opening bell, O'Grady with the right hand. Another right hand by O'Grady. Time running out. And they're going to get Pete Ranzani pulls it out of a split decision. He was a 97-93 for Ranzani. Dwayne Ford had it the other way, 96-95 for Ford. Well, Pete Ranzani said that if he lost this fight, he would retire. Four months later, another television date was signed as O'Grady would take on the power-hating John the Heat Verderosa in Chicago. The initial lunge... I think O'Grady taught him a little respect in the opening exchange. O'Grady can bang. He can punch hard. O'Grady's last fight. Verderosa landing some good shots and getting killed in return. Drop the right. ring generalship in that first round. by Verderosa. Sean just cannot go back right. Good exchanges by both fighters. They're just taking turns. First round, Verderosa has started out by nullifying the ring gentleship and going into exchanges. There they go again. Good combination by O'Grady. <laughs> to land on Verderosa. And with more effective punches as this bout progresses. Oh, Stunned by that left hook. Sean is landing combinations. Verderosa is looking for one punch, and that equation equals points for Sean O'Grady. Got a Robert Mullins back in 1981. Has been relatively inactive since he was stopped by Cornelius Jose Edwards back in April of 82. And Verderosa did land, and then O'Grady able to get out of the way. But here's Verderosa, who hurt O'Grady. O'Grady is hurt. As long as he's backing up, he's vulnerable. And a portion of the crowd brings the heat on. Uppercut by Verderosa. He has O'Grady in trouble here in this fourth round. Oh, left hand right of O'Grady. Try to counter. And down he goes. O'Grady looking at his corner, his worried father telling him to take the count. But no question about it, Verderosa on his mark, ready to come forward. The referee, Nate Morgan, waves him on. He's following the impressive third round by O'Grady, and he is in big trouble. O'Grady's eyes are getting very, very blank. Just over a minute left in this fourth round. If Verderosa had anything left, he could put away O'Grady right now. year of inactivity. Where goes O'Grady? Sean O'Grady down for the second time. Nate Morgan got a big decision on his hands. 
And as I mentioned earlier, three knockdown rule at the referee's discretion, depending on the severity of the knockdown, according to the referee. Oh, Brady taking a heck of a pummeling right in the corner there. Oh, this one is all over. It's all over. John, the heat for Rosa, stopping. The loss devastated O'Grady. As he would later state in an interview with KO Magazine, all of a sudden, I couldn't take a punch. After the fight, his father impulsively hugged him, saying, I love you, and I don't want you to fight anymore. Sean agreed, retiring from the ring at age 24. He would resist the urge to return, and instead, earn a degree in broadcasting. He would work locally in Oklahoma before being hired by the USA Network to broadcast Tuesday night fights alongside Al Albert. O'Grady would also dabble in episodic television and movies, making appearances in Silk Stockings and Savage Streets with Linda Blair. Pat O'Grady would see a year of Sean's breakout career in broadcasting before he would die in 1988 at the age of 60. His family would hold a remembrance but no funeral. He didn't want anybody preaching over him, Sean said and he didn't want any tears shed. He wanted us all to be strong, and that's the way we've been. I think he would have been proud. Sean's mother, Jeannie, would pass away in 2014, and like her husband, Pat, earned respect as a pioneer of boxing in the Midwest in the 1970s and 80s. After the cancellation of Tuesday Night Fights, Sean would begin another career, this time as a commercial real estate broker. He also opened Ringside Medical, a cannabis dispensary O'Grady would discover the benefits of cannabis as it alleviated his injuries from boxing, specifically his hand ailments. O'Grady still does occasional work in the broadcast booth for Fox Sports, and he remains known affectionately by fans as the champ.